Hey guys, Mr. B here, bringing another uh, awesome math video. This one on uh, linear relations. So I know, I know there's a lot. For some reason, there's a lot of demand out there for people doing lines and things like that uh, in their classes. So um, I thought I'd do. You know, I've got some other videos on um, about how to find slope and y equals mx plus b and all that kind of stuff. I thought I'd do a quick video on just finding. Um, Finding linear relations and how do we tell if it's a linear relation? And if we're given a table, what do we do? All right. So, what is a linear relation? So, very simply, a linear relation is see if this works is a relation that increases or decreases by a constant amount. So, it goes up by a constant amount or down by a constant amount. So, what constant means is that it doesn't change. Uh, the amount it goes up by doesn't change. So, for example, if something's increasing by 2, it goes up 2 every time. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Or if it's decreasing by 2, it goes down by that exact same amount every time. So, 10, 8, 6, uh, 4, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, that's a linear relation. That's a very simple definition of a linear relation. Is it increases or decreases by a constant amount. Now, some real life examples of linear relations, and um, I'm hoping someday I'm going to win this one, but uh, set of life, set for life lottery, scratch that out. Someone posted on one of my videos, uh, Mr. B's math skills is greater than Mr. B's grammar. Absolutely true. So set for life lottery. So uh, the set for life lottery here in Canada basically is that you win a, um, I think it's $1,000 every two weeks for uh, the rest of your life, right? So uh, you get $1,000 every two weeks. So the amount that you would win increases by $1,000. So you get $1,000, then another 1,000, you got 2,000, then another 1,000, you got 3,000. So the amount of money you would actually have is increasing by $1,000 in a set amount of time. So that's an example of a linear relationship. Now, with my cell phone company, I don't have unlimited data, unfortunately. I get data overage charges. So, um, then for every um, gig of data I use, it costs me like an extra $25 on my cell phone bill or something outrageous like that. So if I use one gig, it's $25. If I use two gigs, it's $50. It keeps going up by 25 each time. Now, some of you guys might have jobs where you get paid an hourly wage. And basically, you get paid, you know, like $15 an hour or $20 an hour, some might be less than that, might make more than that depending on where you live. In Canada, the minimum wage is somewhere around $14 or $15, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Um, so if you work one hour, you get paid $15. If you work um, two hours, you get paid $30. So when it keeps just increasing by, for every hour you work, it increases by $15. So very simple. So those are some real life examples of linear relations and there are literally a billion of them, guys. So I know there are always some boring ones like uh, cost of the taxi or cell phone charges, things like that. But, you know, these are some, um, you know, uh, real life situations where linear relationships might uh, apply. So how do you tell if something's linear? Well, besides from the definition, what most of you guys are going to see in class is you're going to have tables or graphs. So if you have a table and it goes up or down by a constant amount, and when I say goes up or down, I mean the y value goes up or down by a constant amount. Um, that means it's linear. So we first, we always have to check, of course, that x goes up by a constant amount. So this goes up by 1 plus 1. This is going up by 1. And this goes up by 1. So in general, most tables will go up by a constant amount in the x value. All right. So um, some teachers will try to be tricky, and I've got an example of that in uh, later on, but most x values will go up by the same amount every time. So it might be 2, 4, 6, 8, or 1, 2, 3, 4, things like that. But some teachers try to trick you, and I'll show you how to get, away with, uh, get, get around that. Now, y is what's really important. So y is, is what really has to go up by the constant amount. All right. So if you look at this from 0 to 2, it went up by 2. It went up by 2, and it went up by 2, all right? So there it is. That's a linear relation. So uh, in a couple of seconds, I'm going to show you how to find the equation of this um, when we're given the table. So that's that's probably, you know, most people are here for. Um, and, of course, 
lines are straight. So when you have a linear relation, it makes a straight line. So this is an XY coordinate plane. So you here, you got a very straight line. Sometimes it might be just dots. Could be going this way. So uh, as long as it's in a line, you know, hence linear line, it's in the word linear. So um, that's easy to remember. All right, so let's look at a few tables. So if we have a table like this, we want to find the equation. All right, so the amount it goes up by is really important. So for example, we look at what's happening with X. Always look at X, guys. I know it's easy to want to skip over to the Y because that's what really, really important. Okay, so this y value is going up by 3, all right? So in your classes, you might have learned a word called slope, all right? It's not really overly important that you know that word. Or you might have learned something like rate of change. So basically, slope and rate of change are interchangeable. They're both the same thing. But really what they're after is... Um, is the same thing. So what we're trying to do is come up with some way of measuring how y changes in compared to x. So the formula that we use for this is the change in y over the change in x. All right. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, what happens if I don't have y and x? What if this is uh, cost and uh, time, for example. Well then, all you need to remember is that the right side of the column goes on top, right? So if you have a table of values, this side is going to be on top of my um, little uh, division statement here. So some people remember it as this, the change in the dependent over the change in the independent, right? So I despise those words, dependent and independent variable, although they're important, certainly. They're not something to get obsessed about. I know in some classes, and I've seen tests like this, and sometimes I'm guilty of even asking questions, of get, is getting obsessed with independent and dependent variables. And sometimes they can be kind of muddy. But in general, when you have a table like this, then this is your independent and this is your dependent, right? So always remember the right side of the table is on the top, and then the left side is on the bottom. Okay, so this right here, this rate of change is going to tell us how fast the graph increases. So if we have a line, how fast it's going up. So if I just take my 3 divided by 1, so that number right there is a measure of how much it's increasing each time. All right, so as x goes up by 1, y increases by 3. All right, so now if we want to find the equation, what we have is this. We have y equals 3x plus question mark. All right? So uh, there's always some starting point where our graph or table will start. We have to find that point. So what we want to do is we want to pick a point that we already know x and y for. So we'll take the 3 and sub it in for y. And then we'll take that 2 and sub it in for x. All right, and that rate of change or that number that we found always goes in front of x. All right, and then that's plus the question mark. So we end up having 3 equals 3 times 2 is 6 plus the question mark. And then subtract from both sides, subtract 6. And then we end up with negative 3 equals to the question mark. Okay. And so we end up with y equals 3x minus 3 as our equation. Now, I know some of you guys probably know more than I'm saying here. Like maybe you know that this, this number right here is actually called the y-intercept, right? So I've got more graphs on the uh, details of this equation. But when you first start learning this stuff, you don't have to concern yourself with what y, what, what the y-intercept is and what the x-intercept is. You're just trying to get an equation that will make this table, right? So uh, what we need to remember is the change in y over the change in x, and then we need to find what number would we add to this. What's the starting value of this? So what I mean by starting value is if I had 0 in this table, 
what would be my y value? So it starts at zero, right? So for example, three times zero minus three is gonna be negative three. Now, if you're on a test and you wanna make sure you did this right, pick another value. So if we pick five, for example, three times five is 15 minus three is 12. So we got our equation right. There it is, let's try another one. This one will be a little bit easier. <clears throat> so we've got a table. Now let's look at what's happening with this guy. So it's going up by two. So this one is not increasing by one like the last one, but that doesn't matter. As long as it's consistent, we're gold. So this one goes up by two. This one goes down by four. So for down, we represent negative. And that should be um, negative two here, guys. Let's fix that. Down by negative four, okay? I made a mistake. That's okay. I fixed it. All right, so now we do our same equation. So we'll say delta y over delta x. So change in y over change in x. I didn't explain in the last one. That triangle means change. So this is the change. So negative 4 divided by 2. And that means negative 2. So as x goes up by 1, y goes down by negative 2. That's what that number means, okay? is what happens for every one unit change of x and 1. So one unit change of x. All right, so now... We've got this, y equals negative 2x plus question mark, all right? So we can take any point we want here. I like the point 2, 2. You could certainly use the point 0, 6. And really, if you've got 0 in it, <clears throat> you've already got your answer. But I'll show you that in a second. I'll use 2, 2. So 2, negative 2. The other 2 goes right here, plus question mark. And so that's negative 4 plus question mark. Oh, not 2, not 2. Easy to make mistakes with this stuff, guys. <clears throat> I always tell my students, no one in here has made more mistakes at math than me. <clears throat> because the more math you do, the more mistakes you make. So I add 4 to both sides. Sorry about that, guys. I had a cough and fist. So uh, I know you probably don't, you didn't have the break in it, but that's okay. So uh, where we left off, we were right here, adding four. So that becomes six equals the question mark. So our equation becomes y equals negative two x plus six. So that starting point, which we already knew was in the, gra in the uh, table anyway, is six. So if you got zero in your x value, you always got that number that you add on. All right, one more question. So I like this one because if you look at the x values, this one goes up by two, this one only goes up by one, and this one goes up by um, three. So we've got a bunch of stuff happening here. This one goes up by 20, this one goes up by 30. No. No, this one goes up by 10. What am I talking? My math is not good. This one goes up by 30. All right, so let me let me just fix that one up. Oh my God, one of them days. One of them days there, buddy. Um, so yeah, this one goes up by 10. So now, in order to prove this thing is linear, we actually have to check, right? So we have to do each one of these. So we have to go 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10, and then 10 divided by 1 equals 10. So we're doing delta y over delta x, and then we do 30 divided by 3 equals 10. So <clears throat> this is indeed linear, and we just proved that, okay? Now we want to find our equation. So we have to use this 10 right here. So y equals 10x plus question mark. So we can use 2 and 70 if we want. Any point on there, so 70 equals 10. And we sub in the 2 for x, plus question mark. So that's 20. So I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides, because that actually, yeah, I'll just subtract 20. I'm skipping steps here, but 2 times 10 is 20, right? So when we get question mark equals 50. 
right? So that's where the zero would be in between here and then be at 50. So my equation would be y is equal to 10x plus 50. All right, guys, I know this video is a little bit long. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If it helped you at all, like, share, subscribe. And um, thank you guys so much. I got lots of uh, videos on linear relations. So if you're doing this stuff, just have a quick look on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in class.